Hi, it's Hazel, and welcome to my channel, Hazel Anaka Design. <clears throat> it is September 9th um, when I'm actually taping this, and of course it will be scheduled at some future date. Um, and I guess I just wanted to say, for those of you who may be new and may not know uh, <laughs> my whole life story, um, I live on a farm, and of course this is harvest time. And I drive a combine. And I know farm people will understand this, but maybe others won't, that there is no predicting when harvest will begin or when it will end. It depends on the state of the crop and the current weather conditions, current and weather trends. Like if it's been raining for days, obviously that will delay harvest and so on and so on. Anyway, so I am working my butt off to try to get a number of videos made and scheduled. I, I want to at least get, you know, as many done as I need to, to have September covered. And I just wanted to sort of keep you in the loop about that and also um, ask for some patience and some understanding if I'm not responding to comments or emails as quickly as I normally do. Um, you know, there, there's, there are a lot of moving parts here. So um, I expect that our harvest will, you know, may even drag into October. So again, I'll, I'll keep talking to you as I uh, prepare videos. I don't want to leave you in the lurch. So that's why I'm doing my little spiel. Anyway, what I thought <coughs> we could do today is talk about uh, magazines and the resources and the, re and the resource they provide to people who are paper crafting and journal making. Now, there are all kinds of ways to access magazines. There are certain publications that are free, typically at, in stands at a grocery store or, you know, public places. There are um, subscriptions that come right to your own mailbox. And um, there's the unsolicited type of mail. Now, that may be more like catalogs than actual magazines. But again, you know, look with a, an open mind and a, and a, and a keen eye. There are typically freebie magazines at most public libraries. <clears throat> there are, <coughs> excuse me, there are also magazines at a far reduced price um, at thrift stores. Now, uh, and of course, you could always put out the call to, you know, friends and relatives and say, hey, when you're done with your whatever, you know, I'd love to have a look at it. Now, this um, is a Martha Stewart Living, dated November 2007. So, we know that other than Martha's little stint as a jailbird, she has been, um, <coughs> excuse me, a great influence, a role model, an aspirational kind of person. Now, as long as you don't get sucked into thinking that you've got to be, <clears throat> you've got to measure up to her standards, then it's okay. Just, you know, take what you want and what you need from what she offers. She has a whole empire. Um, I don't know if she has any current TV shows, but certainly they're probably available somewhere. Um, <clears throat> she's probably, again, lots of books. The magazines are probably still available. I don't know if she's currently publishing. And of course, a line of hard goods and products. So I thought that was a good one to demo on. Now, this is a thick magazine. All magazines, you will probably have noticed, have gotten a heck of a lot thinner. This one had 280 pages. Wow. Most magazines, I'd, I'd venture to say all magazines have either gotten smaller in size and or skinnier. Still, it doesn't matter. It is what it is. We can take advantage of what we see. Now, 
If you are lucky enough to have access to some vintage magazines, well, lucky you. Um, so in this folder, I have some pages that I either pulled out. I don't even know what this is. Uh, oh, this is about cameras. So this came from a camera magazine. So again, it's, you know, it doesn't matter what the subject matter is. Um, I was at a town-wide garage sale not so recently. I mean, not so long ago. And um, I ended up paying, you know, kind of more than I wanted to probably for some 1950s magazines. I got the Country Guide and another one, Nature something or other, that I'd never seen before from the 40s. I, I will be showing those in a thrift haul video. But the point is that whether it's um, a woman's magazine, a crafting magazine, or whatever, there are lots and lots of things to, to harvest and to use. So, you know, here, again, I, what I, what I'm, I'll show you in a minute. Um, if I'm not sure what I want, or if it's, you know, itty bitty little things like these camera ads, I will save the whole page. Or maybe I can't decide which side of the page I want to use. So typically then if I'm watching TV or, or um, whatever, you know, downtime. It's not something you can readily do in a moving vehicle, especially if you're driving. I'm kidding. Um, fussy cutting or squaring off ads is um, obviously makes these images ready to use. So you can see that I've got an ad. I've got these ladies. Now, some of these ladies were really tall, like really tall so I just I cut off any limbs I don't care about or can't afford to use you know so it's a variety of things this came from from some I think these are probably um fabric paints because this was like a needle point or um oh what would you call it um can't think of the exact name of the magazine right now but it kind of a needle arts magazine oh and Hopefully you notice that I also save the cards, the subscription cards uh, that would have been tucked into them because those can either be included as ephemera, particularly if they're a little bit older, or they could uh, be used as bases to form, you know, journaling cards or whatever. So fine and, uh, and of course everybody has their own system for how they store these things this I don't know this is fairly portable you know maybe at some point I would do a finer more detailed sorting like uh, women um, objects uh, you know kitchen you know break it down further because it could be it could even with this setup here Whoops, almost broke a, a girl's leg off. Um, <coughs> it's still a fair bit of handling and sorting of some pretty delicate papers. Um, old radios, whatever. So you get the point. So use magazines. It doesn't matter whether they're current or they're vintage. The, the process would be the same. So all I've amassed here is a cutting mat, a, a tear ruler, a steel ruler, and my knife. So this is basically how I would approach this. Oh, and I, I should direct you, <coughs> and I will link her a channel or name her channel. I still haven't figured out how to do those live uh, links, uh, even though I've Googled it and tried it and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but... I think if obviously if I give you the channel name, you will be able to find it. Um, a fellow Canadian that I've who I've just become aware of in the last few months is Caroline on the hillside, and she's in Ontario, and she has some really interesting videos on how she uses magazines, and in fact does use them 
as she's a passenger in a car, with some doodling right on the magazine pages. And I, of course, want to do that um, as soon as <laughs> as soon as I become a passenger in a car. Um, anyway, so I will uh, hopefully remember to link Caroline's channel. If I don't, it's Caroline on the hillside. And um, so, okay, let's begin. So now, you know, if there were 10 of us in the room, we would probably all be choosing different images, different pages from an identical magazine. So a person needs to think, well, do I like this because I know I'm doing a brown and aqua color journal and this would make great collage fodder? Am I doing um, a house, a homemaking, household, architectural kind of journal? And, you know, this bookcase would be really great. And there's that lamp I could, or that lamp I could plunk onto um, a card. And that would determine whether or not you want that particular image. Maybe you you have a weakness for cute puppies and you would want to fussy cut that. Or maybe you're doing a really girly one and you love you love images of uh, perfume bottles. Fussy cut that. Um, and of course, you've heard it a hundred times before, but I will repeat it. Don't forget to, to save words that you think you may need or want in the future. I live for moments like this, pleasures, well, probably don't care about Estee Lauder unless you're doing a whole makeup perfume thing. So I would say, now typically I just tear things out. And, and sometimes, honestly, that works better and is quicker then fooling around with, oh, let's put this in here and let's pull out a knife. And, you know, that is an option. And, and frankly, I think it also depends on how the magazines were put together as well. Um, so we'll see if I use the cutting, this mat, uh, cutting mat or not. But I would just set this aside. Because at this point, I think speed is sort of the, the key thing. And I realize that there's probably a bit of glare, but again, it is what it is. Magazines are um, are the way they are. Now, this is a very cute page. So we've got an illustration of a fawn and a cute little baby girl. Nothing that I want on the other side. No brainer, rip it out. Now, of course, because of the way the magazine was laid out and bound, you know, part of his tail and, par and part of that back leg is gone. But that doesn't matter. You just bleed that image off the edge of your page. And so what? A couple of good expressions or um, sentiments too. So again, I would just put that aside. Here is a card. We'll make a little pile for those. Now, do I want these silver candlesticks? I could, but maybe not right this minute or not right um, now. If these little squared off photo montage kinds of things are the right color, the right subject matter, naturally you would cut those out. Sometimes little thumbnails of past or upcoming issues is a great thing as well because then you could do sort of almost like an inches uh, masterboard. So here we have a variety of things. We've got a fishing lure. We've got kind of a miniature postcard. We got some three kids. We got some kids fishing and we have like a watermark um, you know, dulled down map in the background. So I would say that because, and I'm going to always be looking at the other side. Now, see, I could also love this page because of these colors. If you have been paying attention or have been here a while, you know that I love copper. 
and at some point there will be a copper colored journal. So again, I'm just going to put this aside knowing that I can fussy cut that lure if I want to. I'll cut out the postcard, may do something with those kids. This little strip of map could be part of a master board or collage fodder. So these five images are all the same size. So this is in November, yeah. So for is an American publication, so obviously Thanksgiving is a the theme here. So if a person was doing a Thanksgiving journal, um, and of course, Canada, we would be doing it for October. You've got a happy family scene. You've got some, maybe you've got, maybe you're doing something that involves furniture. So that would be good. There are two um, brass or golden turkeys as centerpieces. I guess those are cranberries. So, you know, I typically would be in a combine around that time. So... Uh, I don't think I'll ever be doing a Thanksgiving journal, to be honest. Now, there's Martha herself. She's very recognizable, so you may may or may not want to, or maybe you want to do a journal that's a tribute to Martha and all her, or her bright ideas. Here is, um, I don't know if that's a craft uh, project that's upcoming, but any of these sized photos could easily be um, you know, little journaling cards. Here's a kid licking a candy cane. There's parents or a parent with kids and a laptop. I'd probably tear this up. There's nothing that appeals to me on this page. And sometimes to further, I don't know, not that it saves so much space, I will even sort of rough tear and reduce the amount that I'm, you know, storing, and also help remind me what it is that I zeroed in on. Because it's sometimes, you know, I could be pulling things out of this magazine today and maybe not get fussed to get to the fussy cutting until, um, you know, for a couple of months. Um, I think I'm going to rip this one out as well because of those babies. Now, it, it, there is some risk in doing this, but if I know that I care more about those two sleeping babies or that sleeping baby, then I would sort of just do like that. I would do like that. I don't really like that Christmas tree, so I would get rid of that. Mm, I wreck the carrots, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm sure there are more carrots where those came from. So then I know that, oh, this is why I wanted this. And then I would look at the other side and see if there's anything worth saving here. Mm, maybe that pie. So further tear it down. And again, this is the sort of thing that you do when perhaps you're... Now that kid is cute, but I don't like that gate. So maybe I would... Okay, let's tear this one off. And you can see I'm not leaving much behind. But if I tear this carefully, I can still get most of that lady's face. And certainly, you know, if I had to, if I was trying to save her face, I would cut that girl's elbow off, you know, without a moment's hesitation. I've got pretty much all you would want of this face, you know, all the key, all the key ingredients. So I would just tear this down as well. Don't want those words, so I would do that. And again, we know that if we're working in our art journals or we're doing um, collage, it doesn't matter. Maybe we just want eyes. 
Maybe we're doing all eyes. Maybe we're, maybe lips is what we're focusing on. So, you know, don't um, reject uh, things just because you can't see, um, because it doesn't jump out at you as to how something should be used. <laughs> well, clearly, a girl like that is, you know, these girls are a dime a dozen. However, this is not. <laughs> I thought that was Tina Fey. Yes, it is. Can anyone identify with this scene? I mean, other than the baby at the desk. Love it. How would I use it? I don't know. Now, this is like Tina Fey had apparently applied for an American Express card, so we've got this scripty type of thing. Recent impulse buy, a case of soup. Wow. Can't shop without getting hungry. So, um, you know, I guess it depends. If you feel that, oh, I never see any script, you might choose to, to want that page. Again, we know for most of us, it's safer to have pictures of pie than it is to eat pie. So I'm going to keep that. Now again, that could be cropped. And you will remember, do I have that near me? Yes, I do. If you saw the video, that was a heck of a good video. I hope you saw the video on those architectural drawings that I got. You know that I encouraged you to form, maybe I, it would work this way without me having to reverse it. You know that I encouraged you to develop uh, a viewfinder. Now this is probably not a good example because it would make more sense to fussy cut this tray rather than have a, you know, beheaded body and a bit of a, so, well, I'm going to keep this handy because I'm sure we'll be able to use it somewhere. So then I think to myself, oh, there's more pie here. So if I get rid of Martha, then I can have, you know, another pie picture. And honestly, do I save any time doing it this way? I don't know. You know, clearly I still have to go back in with scissors or a trimmer to, um, you know, to focus in on the image that I wanted. But somehow this makes maybe my fussy cutting pile seem more manageable. Maybe you want the word ponderings. Nothing else that I want here. There's more of the pie. Did I ever tell you the story about how poor I was at making a pie? That when our hockey team, when my son's hockey team was doing a pie sale as a fundraiser, I had to subcontract out my quota of pies to a friend because I couldn't have done it. And, you know, it's just, it's totally unacceptable to have a bot pie. So I think I would leave this, this intact because who knows which of these pieces, uh, which of these pictures I might want. Oh, here's a like a lattice top. Is that what you call it? Oh. Um, Again, there's sure's a heck of a lot of pie in this book, in this magazine, but <coughs> anyway, I should probably you you've gotten the you've gotten the notion. You've gotten the message about what I'm saying about this part. So let's see if I can just maybe flip to another section that will be a little more interesting. Okay, so there are more of these cards. And you can usually find those quickly because they're the ones that prevent you from 
the pages from turning nicely. Okay, what else? Oh, in this case, there are some perforated. Let's see if I can fold this on the perforation. Perforated recipe cards. The paper is only marginally heavier than the page, but you have four perfect sized recipe cards. Add some embellishing and you've got four journal cards or four, if you're doing a, <clears throat> a cooking journal, you've got four colorful, um, cohesive images to use in pockets. Um, oh, Polly. Now at the back here, there are some ads. So maybe, those look good. Um, look, here's a little chaise lounge that would be great too. Or if you wanted a hammock. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's just see what else we can see. about fussy cutting some trees. And let's see what else we might be able to find. See how it keeps going back to this. Now suppose you were doing a master board and you thought, boy, I need some red. I would tear out a page like this just because there is a big expanse of a color that I need. Look at that. This is worth pulling out simply because it would be great in a gardening journal or in a household journal. I would probably get rid of that, this ad part at the bottom. I would leave the can there knowing that I could cover it up with something else. Here are some items that could be fussy cut if a person wanted to. What's going on here? Maybe you have a, well, let me just pull this off first and show you. Maybe you just want a whole bunch of little faces. Now, of course, this is, you need to be able to access the, you need to get in close enough, but. And this is pretty good because this one inch is about the right size. We've got a consistent background. So again, I know I talk a lot about master boards, probably because I love doing them, but also because they're so versatile. So let me just punch out a few more of these girls and we will I'll give you an idea. Now we're starting to get a bit of overlap, but again, once you take this girl out of context, no one's going to know that that was the other girl's t-shirt. Now, of course, you probably don't need to be told what to do with punch-ups. 
Now let's suppose that this green cutting mat was your page. You could easily do a page edge design. Maybe let's alternate blondes and brunettes. You could easily glue these girls down the side of a page. I'm overlapping them, but you could, of course, because these circles are perfect, you could also just butt them up to each other and then you'll need fewer of them to cover a page. Now all of a sudden you've got an interesting little thing happening there. I might as well get these other four and then I can throw the rest of this out. Of course, you could use the, the pieces one by one and um, you know use them sort of as a spot decoration on tags or pockets or whatever. You could put them on a coordinating or contrasting background and create a belly band and what else you could do a master board and just scatter these faces all over the, the master board Okay, so what I would do now with them is I'd group them together, probably put a paper clip around them to keep them all together because there's nothing worse than using, you know, if you've got 12, using 11 and then later finding the, the 12th one. So I would put an, um, a paper clip to hold them together and I might even... Uh, stick them into my master board book just as a reminder that hey use these so let's see I should be getting rid of some of this garbage instead of just having it pile up here okay let's do a couple more ideas and then I will let you go so in a case like in a case like this we've got a full page ad and you could easily fussy cut this out. So let's just, nothing to be aware of on the other side. You could, well, maybe I forget about use your words. I know how he likes it. Um, I'll just go like so. So what a person could do with this one is be like sort of rough tear or rough cut around this glue this this whole thing onto a, say an index card or scrap piece of um, card stock or something and then once the glue has dried fussy cut the three like leave them intact but fussy cut the three images and then use them somehow on a page as a tuck spot. Um, if you fussy cut them as you see it right here, and then decide, well, this is kind of weak and puny, I need to back it, then you're fussy cutting the same thing a second time, which isn't a very good use of anyone's time. Every day should be this good. That is probably a sentiment that could apply to a lot of things. So I'll keep that as well. Maybe you're doing something on facts and fallacies or healthy living. So look at the um, look at the uh, story headings and the graphics and so on, the typography in the ads. So maybe you needed pictures, cartoon type pictures of kids drinking milk, or maybe you like that milk carton because that's your favorite brand or whatever. Here's another 
add that could easily end up in a cooking journal. So, because you know, what, what we think was so darn cool about the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, will someday be cool. And again, I said this magazine was 2007. So it's getting up there in age as well. So when Fleshman's changes their packaging, this will seem vintage. So try not to be uh, snobbish <laughs> about what you consider to be worthy because that is a moving target. So here are five um, food images. There are a whole bunch of little jars. Now, wouldn't it be cute to fussy cut those jars? And there's a bigger one. I'll keep that page intact. Maybe you love roses. Maybe those are your favorite flowers. Now, can I, do I want this lady? I guess I could rip this out. I don't really have, I didn't assemble scissors as a tool here, but clearly we could do that if we want to keep a nice crisp edge. So we've got roses and we've got a couple of faces. Add them to the pile. Now on the other side, oh, I guess it's, yeah, it's been ruined. I was going to say on the other side was that word, ouch. Maybe some, okay, here's sweet and salty. There's another product thing. Here's a bigger version of that turkey, um, you know, tablescape. So that could be uh, saved as well. Oh, maybe you, maybe you love doors and windows and architecture. Maybe you were planning a, a fall journal and that pumpkin display is just the perfect um, color scheme for you. Maybe you want to focus on place settings. Here's this blue and gold one. Here's this sort of a soft yellow one. Here's even a bigger picture of that same table with those turkeys. Here's another place setting. Another one. This, it seems to me, would, would be great to use as collage fodder. Oh, and we get a whole bunch more uh, red images. Okay, so it starts here. Crimson Tide. So, again, maybe, maybe once you rip these or tear these pages into the piece, the pieces that you want to use on a master board, they could easily, <coughs> excuse me, become um, a feature in your Christmas journal. And nobody but you will know that they all started out as cranberries. And there's enough variation here that, you know, and there's probably enough color in all these pages that you could end up very clearly with more than one masterboard. So let's just demo this. So. You know, it's not, like if I were you, if I were doing it, I would save the whole page. However, maybe you had something else in mind. Now, this is a little trickier because it's round versus rectangular or square. But suppose I was trying to decide, well, which of these images do I love the best? You know, I can only do a, a four by five or a three by five card or pocket. So do I like those pairs better or do I like to include, um, you know, some of that peel? 
do I like these colors better than those other ones that I chose? Do I only have enough to do an artist trading card? So this might be what I choose instead. So if you have, and I said it's easy enough to get pieces of mat board, just set, cut them into two pieces and you can use them. There are those same chairs in a bigger version. You can use them to create your own sort of viewfinder. More pie. Okay, maybe you're doing a farm journal and you need a little, a little kid in a cowboy hat. Or maybe you're doing a grandparent's journal and you need a grandfather. Only you can decide what you need more here. And I don't know that I need any of that right this second, so I'm going to leave it. Um, I should say, I heard through the grapevine that they're doing it again this year. Some of my friends in the States are doing what they call, like, I think they're calling it a harvest hop. So basically what they did in 2023, and I guess it's happening again in 2024, is that somebody, you know, people have a stack of magazines, they will harvest the images, the pages, the things they want, much as we're doing here today. And then they will bundle up um, those sort of cannibalized uh, magazines and send them on to somebody else. That person will go through it, go through those same magazines, take what they want, add a few of their own magazines, send it on to another person, and so on and so on. So it's not as though, you know, the last person getting them uh, has nothing but a cover left. It means that the supply is constantly getting um, replenished. Now, obviously, there will be postage costs with that. So, you know, you have to, I guess, weigh whether or not it makes sense to do that. But that's not to say that, you know, we couldn't do the same thing in Canada. Again, there would be the cost of postage. But also, um, a person could just choose to do it with people you see in person saying, okay, so for instance, I like that cake. Um, now that I'm uh, attending this junk journal group in Edmonton, I could suggest that, hey, we do a, a magazine, like a harvest hop. So for an upcoming meeting, everybody brings some magazines that they have already gone through and, you know, we'll share them that way. So the idea is, oh, some sheet for Sandy. Um, so the, um, the idea, most good ideas can be adapted so they make sense. So I would, I would cut that out and send that or put that in the stuff I say for Sandy. Okay. We have probably been at this long enough. I'm sure I've <clears throat> beaten this horse to death. Oh, this is nice. Maybe you're doing something and you need the Scrabble logo or the you can do it. <clears throat> oh, and maybe you need to cut these tiles out and spell flowers. So that's a cool page. Anyway, um, this could go on forever because this is a big magazine and you know how that goes. Maybe you like to collect coupons because they too will at some point be vintage. Does Bed Bath & Beyond still exist even? I'm not sure. I think they've gone uh, into receivership. More product, more logos. More product, more logos. You know, if, if it depends what you're looking at or looking for. I always use the example of a red car. The minute you buy a red car, you can't see anything but red cars all around you on the roads. 
more products. Again, this could easily be a belly band because it's wide enough. Maybe I should rip this out. Um, irresistibly, you know, put another word with that. And all of a sudden you have um, a sentiment that describes your page or your project perfectly. You could almost do it like a ransom note where you've got different colors and different fonts and you and you piece things all together to spell out a message of some sort. So I'm going to stop here. I guess I'll pull this card out yet. And this of course is a homemaker type magazine. If you had uh, a farm publication, you'd be getting pictures of cows and tractors. If you had a parenting magazine, it would probably be babies and toys. Um, if it was a fashion magazine like, you know, Vogue or, or InStyle or one of those, you'd be getting pictures of shoes and purses. An avant-garde kind of... Um, fashions. I like those glasses. How about some cheese, some blue ribbon cheese? Anyway, I think you get the idea. So I'm going to stop there and I encourage you to beg, borrow, or steal. Well, maybe not. No, don't steal. Don't go to jail because of a magazine. Find a magazine. Maybe you like that guy with that block of cheese. Find a magazine and see, challenge yourself to find as many possible images in there as, <clears throat> excuse me, as you possibly can. How about those Campbell soup cans? <clears throat> Aren't, isn't that an iconic image? Okay, I quit. I quit because I know that you are chomping to find a magazine and start ripping. Some of these brands I don't even know, so they don't mean anything to me. Oh. Oh. Those are fingers that are all pressed up against it. And that's a little bit creepy. Anyway, that's all I have to say. We will see you. Oh, sometimes I cut out these kinds of headshots. Um, you know, maybe this is the editorial team or something. And a person, because those are almost inches. You could do a whole master board or a whole collage just of those little faces. So let me do that. Pressed flowers. And like watch uh, fobs. That's got to come out of there. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here. I hope that this has been useful to you. And I hope that you go and start ripping and tearing. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.